In this video, I'm going to share with you my weekend haul and talk a little bit about how to make the hobby pay for itself. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. I hope all of you guys had a great weekend. I know that I did. I was in the Bay Area and I got a chance to go to a local comic book store there called Heroes. And it is an amazing store. If you ever find yourself in the Bay Area and have the opportunity to go check it out, I highly recommend it. I've been there once before and they always have amazing deals. Uh, all of their back issues are 50% off. I don't know why they do it, it, considering that all of the list prices are already really low, but they have great stuff. They have a lot of inventory and a lot of back issues. So I always enjoy uh, visiting it and I wanted to share with you guys what I picked up. So let's get into it. All right, so the first issue I got here is Marvel Team Up 55. This is Spider-Man and Warlock, and this is the first appearance of the Gardener. And if you guys hadn't seen my other video, I made a top five sort of sleeper MCU books to pick up for under $5. And this was one of them that I talked about because it features the Gardener. So I was in the store, I was flipping through, I saw it again. Maybe I sold myself on my own video. I already have a, a copy in my box, but I figured, hey, why not have two? Because you never know. All right, the next issue I picked up here is Marvel 2-in-1 number 52. This is one I haven't talked about yet on the channel, but I do think it's also interesting. It is the first appearance of Crossfire. He's a small villain, pops up every now and again. So, you know, you know, you never know with, with these types of villains if they end up coming into an MCU show or, or something like that. And um, But what was really significant to me about this issue was that it features Moon Knight. And Moon Knight just being a hot character... Uh, right now, since Oscar Isaac was announced that he's going to be playing him, I figured I'd pick up this book. It looked cool. The cover was cool. It had Moon Knight, had a mini first appearance, and it was super, super cheap. So I decided I'd gr grab it. All right. The next one I have here is a, is a cool book. Uh, this is Fantastic Four 140, and this is The Origin of Annihilus. This is one that I have been kind of looking for a little bit whenever I thumb through Fantastic Four sections. I'm always looking for this this book in particular. I've seen it a couple times, but it was what I felt was overpriced when I saw it. And this one was super, super cheap. So uh, I'm glad that I can pick this up. I actually really wanted to read this one. And I think that if one day we ever do get to Annihilus, this is one of those books that uh, could pick up. It's not his first appearance, but it's an important book in his story arc. So I figured I'd grab it. All right. The next one is a twofer. And I'll show these side by side. This is Avengers 186 and Avengers 187. And for those who don't know, these are the, this is the first appearance of a demon known as Cthune. And he's the one that impregnates Wanda uh, and puts the demon babies. And he has a connection to Master Pandemonium. Lots of crazy, you know, con convoluted story with the whole thing. But per my MCU speculation, I figured... Hey, I better have first Mephisto, first Cthon, and first Master Pandemonium because one of these guys is going to be the ones that is the bad guy in the WandaVision show, and I figured I, I should have them. Uh, so I got these two. Again, they were super, super cheap, and I felt like I got a good deal, so I'll pick it up, and at the very least, I'll read the story and move them, move them on to someone else. All right, the next one I picked up here is another Marvel 2-in-1. This is Thing and Stingray, number 64. Now, this is probably the most obscure book I got in my haul uh, this weekend. But for those who don't know, this is the first appearance of a few members of the Serpent Society. And I, I can't even remember off the top of my head which members they are. But the Serpent Society is an interesting evil villain team that I haven't talked about. And I do believe that there is a possibility that maybe they pop up eventually. I, I, I don't see them coming up anytime soon, but I do think later down the road when they're you know trying to pull more bad guys into, into the mix, I do think that the Serpent Society could be something that Feige does a good job with. And I won't quite get into why I think that is. Uh, I'm sure later on when I do future MCU spec videos, I'll, I'll talk about them a little bit, but I saw this for $2, so I had to grab it. All right, my next book here that I got is Ghost Rider. Number one, which is uh, his '90s uh, solo series, and this is one that that I picked up. 
it was five dollars and i figured hey why not why not get it uh, i am likely going to trade this right away and i'll show you why in a second and i'll kind of bring it back to uh, why I'm going to be trading a lot of these books that I'm showing you now. But just figured I'd, I'd show you one. This is definitely going to be um, out into the market soon. All right, next one I have, uh, starting to get into the, the good stuff, the older stuff. This is Detective Comics number 437, an old Batman, 20 center. You know, I am not a big DC person. I, I don't know the, I mean, I know the DC characters, but I don't know the comics as well. Admittedly, I'm, I'm much more of a Marvel person, but I did see that this was a book on Key Collector that had some value and it was super, super dirt cheap and it looked like a pretty good copy. So I decided to pick it up. Again, this is going on the market uh, almost immediately for me and I'll show you why. All right, next up, here we go. Starting to get into the cool stuff. Here we go with Thor 137. This is the first appearance of Ulick. Now, there has been some speculation that Ulick might be a, a villain that pops up in the Loki show, and I'd say that that certainly could be the case. We have no idea, but I figured that I'd grab this book because you never know if, uh, if the, he does pop off or he does show up. This could be something that's pretty hot. Again, old Thor, 12 center, first appearance of a, of a villain that's, that's important to the Thor mythos. Figured I'd grab it. All right, similarly, the next one I got is Thor 140, and this is the first appearance of Growing Man. Now, the Ulick book could pay off sooner if, in fact, Ulick does show up in a Loki show or something, you know, within the Thor universe. But this is one that I'm almost certain that this will pay off eventually. And again, all of the stuff that I got is way cheaper than I could ever hope to find on eBay. So I, I had to grab it all. I thought they were all good deals. But this is Growing Man. And Growing Man, for those who don't know, is a kind of henchman sidekick agent of Kang the Conqueror. Kang has used Growing Man a few times in his storylines. And since we, well, don't know for sure, but since we kind of know that Jonathan Major is going to be playing Kang, this is one that could be, could be a villain that pops up, you know, could be... Kang's henchman, one of his henchmen that he uses in, you know, his eventual MCU movie. So first appearance of Growing Man, Thor, 140, 12 center. Gotta love that. All right, this is a pretty cool one that uh, nobody who's watching this video is going to think is cool except for me. But this is Strange Tales 123. And I am a huge fan of like B-tier villains. I don't know why. But I just love how corny they are, I guess, is what it is. There's just something so fun to me and so vintage about th these villains that are just muhaha, mustache twirling bad guys for no reason. And this is the first appearance of the Beetle. And the Beetle's totally a B-tier villain who who's popped up a lot in different, you know, in Spider-Man and Daredevil and all over the place. And this is a really old kind of Silver Age book that he has his first appearance in. And I think I'm going to do a video later this week that references this book because what I think is interesting about Beetle is that he eventually uh, becomes one of the members of the Thunderbolts. And since the MCU is kind of insinuating that we might be getting some Thunderbolt action with General uh, Ross and everything, I mean, who knows? Like maybe, maybe Beetle is going to be a member of that team. He definitely was in the team in the comic book. So this could be super, super sleeper. I, I don't, I don't really know. But in any case, I, I'm, I'm really happy to have it. I just like it. It's just an old sort of vintage book, and I got it for a really good deal. The only problem with this is that if you guys can't see right here, for some reason, the person that I guess had it from back in the day has tape across the staples, which is really weird because the staples, from what I can tell, are totally intact. But there's tape on it, so I'm gonna be performing some surgery with a, a knife, and I'm gonna be trying to pull these pieces of tape off, hopefully without hurting the book. Um, but I'm gonna give it my best effort, and yeah, Strange Tales 123, pretty cool. I'm re I really like that one. Again, I don't know the B villains; they just they just do it for me. All right, next up, this is pretty cool. I have Strange Tales 158, and for those who don't know, this is the first appearance of the Living Tribunal. This is a really cool, cool book. I, I, 
I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one because part of me wants to put it on the market because I got it for such a discounted price that I could definitely make a profit on it. And I'm looking to make a profit because I want to pay for the big, big book that I that I picked up this weekend. But this is one that I, I saw a long time ago when I first got back into the hobby. I remember flipping through and I saw this being sold for $15. And... I just thought it was a cool cover. I, I didn't know it was the first appearance of the Living Tribunal, but I knew who the Living Tribunal was. I was like, oh, cool. He's the Living Tribunal on the cover. I should pick it up. But for whatever reason at that time, I just didn't. And sure enough, obviously someone else got it. And and now when I look at the prices on eBay, they're selling for $60, $70, $80. So I always kind of felt like this is the one that got away from me. And I was kicking myself for that. But you know, the universe is funny and it, and it pushed this book back my way. And I might do a video about that philosophy now because there's been a few books that I've regretted not buying, but then they come back around and I don't know what it is. It's like the weird universe, just, just comic book universe, comic book gods talking to you and, and, and getting the books that you want back into your hands. But anyways, I picked up this book. Very, very cool cover. I want to hold on to it, but I might flip it uh Undetermined, undetermined yet. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe maybe you guys let me know. What do you think? Should I hold on to this book? I think that the Living Tribunal could show up in the MCU eventually, but I feel like we're a long, long ways away from that happening. I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying, given the movies that are out there right now, there's no way we're seeing the Living Tribunal for another five years, right? There's just no way. So I feel like maybe I can find this book again, and I don't really know. We'll see. You guys let me know. Let me know what you think. All right. Next up, here we go. The two more left. This is two more left. This is a really cool one. This is Fantastic Four number 57. I mean, look at that cover. This is a classic Kirby cover with Do Dr. Doom on the front and I think Silver Surfer's on there. This might be the, the you know, fourth Silver Surfer on the cover, period. But this was just a really awesome book. I mean, I've never seen it in person and this was a really, really good deal. So I thought I definitely want to pick this up and I'm probably going to put this back onto market because this is one I can make a big profit on, I believe. And I want to be able to pull, uh, to pay for this big book that I'm about to show you. But needless to say, this is a really, really cool cover. The, you know, lower grade, the staples are intact. There is a big crease right here, if you can see it. But overall, I mean, what a cool Silver Age book, 12 Center, early Fantastic Four, early Silver Surfer, cool Doctor Doom cover. I'm sure a lot of people would love to have something like this. So that leads us to the big book that I got this weekend, which is Journey into Mystery 103, First Appearance of Enchantress and Executioner. I talked about in another one of my videos what I felt were undervalued spec MCU books, and this was one of them. Now, in that video, I own a few of those, but I didn't actually own this one, and I had been looking for it, but I just never found the one that was for me. And I walked into the store, and I saw it on the wall, and I looked at the price, and I was, I was instantly tempted because the price was right around what I felt like was fair to pay for this, but... Again, you know, it was still not necessarily that cheap. So I set my mind that I was going to get it and I was going to maybe get or find some other books that I could trade and and make make this book pay for itself. But um, that's kind of, I guess, a good time, good time to segue into what I wanted to also talk about, which is making the hobby pay for itself. Um, the, the book I got in my last comic book haul was the first appearance of Rogue. And yeah, I have it here actually. So I had this this one I showed it to you guys last week and it was the first appearance of Rogue and I talked about capitalizing on opportunities when they, when they come. And even though I went into that store not wanting to buy this Rogue book, I ended up getting it because I knew it was a good deal. And if I were to put it back onto eBay or put it out and trade it, I could get really good value return on it. And I think that this is the time that I'm going to do that. I'm going to put this book out back into the market. And in addition, I'm going to put some of the other books back into the market. And I did the, the numbers and I looked at everything based on what these books are selling for. And these 
books, essentially, not only will I make my money back on the books that, or the money that it took for me to get the books in the first place, but I will actually make enough profit to pay for this journey into Mystery 103. So what I think is kind of a cool thing to demonstrate here in terms of the hobby is, you know, earlier I picked up this book and essentially I'm going to use this book to turn it into Journey into Mystery 103 for me, a book that I actually wanted to have and essentially have it pay for itself. And that's something that I would suggest for you guys, again, as you get more into this hobby, as you get back into the hobby, you know, if you want to work within your budget and you want to work, um, get those keys that you want and be able to afford stuff without spending infinite amounts of money, trading, trading and, and selling is, is definitely the way to go. You know, if you can find these books that are good value or you start to learn, you know, what books out there have value or or are being undervalued at a store or undervalued online and you can find these things and capitalize on opportunities you can definitely turn them into the books that you ultimately want and with the rogue book that i showed last week and some of these other books here that i picked up i'm definitely going to take those uh, profits and use it to pay for the journey into mystery that i wanted so Anyways, I guess that's it for the video. I want to show you guys my weekend haul. I think I did pretty good. I'm really excited about what I got. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you think guys think I did good? Do you guys have any uh, books that you picked up over the weekend? Let me know. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.